So let's let's turn our attention to Jim. And I know we could probably talk about the Oilers for days here, but a um, couple interesting situations we want to get your take on here. And the first one, and I definitely didn't expect this. I'm not sure about anybody else, but um, Yessi Poliarvi is back. Um, did you see this coming? And what do you think that he can give the Oilers this time around? Uh, yeah, I guess I could say I saw this coming only because they talked about it so much for a couple of weeks before they finally pulled the trigger on it, but we'd have been hearing a lot that he was coming. Right. And then it wasn't yeah. working out. And then the agent wasn't getting along with the, the team and whatever, but with new management and a new coach and basically a fresh start. And you got to remember he's two years older now, well, almost two years older now. So he's had a chance to sort of go to another league, really sort of light it on fire, mature a little bit. Uh, and he wants to play in the NHL. So he's got to realize at this point, the way to do that is to play with the Oilers. So um, yeah, I think the roads led to him coming back. I'm super impressed with the deal though. You know, two years at one point, what is it? One seven, five, like really quite inexpensive. And a two year deal is going to give him a lot of opportunity to see what he really is. I have a feeling that he's going to surprise people pleasantly. I think a lot of people have written him off at this point because he hasn't proven in the NHL that he can do it. Um, he's had success somewhere else and maybe he's got his swagger back and maybe he comes in and finds the right chemistry with somebody. I'm wondering if in free agency, the Oilers just built their third line and he's on it. Um, so he could do well. Uh, and if he does, it's an extremely inexpensive contract for a guy who could produce. We don't have a clue what he's going to produce. You know, we don't know if he's going to get 10 goals or going to get 20. He could even get 30. You don't know because he's never done it, but he had such high pedigree coming out of the draft. He's yet to realize it. Um, so I think it's an incredibly cool set for me. It's kind of like they grabbed the free agent, but did it at a low risk kind of, you know, we'll see what happens. And Oilers did a lot of that. Yeah, absolutely. They did. And that leads to my next question Two kind of key players that they were also able to bring in Kyle Turris and Tyson Berry, just, um, where do you see them fitting on the Oilers roster? Well, Turris, I think, is their third-line center. I think that was why they went and got him. They wanted to get a third-line center. That was on Holland's to-do list. Uh, my only concern with Kyle Turris, I guess there's two. There's one is that we don't really know what kind of a penalty killer he is, and the Oilers had one of the best penalty kills in the league last year. Um, so they lose something, and Riley Shane's probably leaving, and Turris may or may not be an excellent penalty killer. That said, his year in Nashville was just off. I don't know exactly what happened there. I'm not sure that anybody really knows what happened there. But he's a much better player than he played in Nashville. So I have a feeling his offensive production could really trump the lack of maybe penalty kill or defensive production. But he's a right shot center. He's going to play a third line center there. I think he's a really good fit. He's a really low risk at 1.6 or whatever it was that they got him for. Um, he has the potential to really kind of explode. I don't know if he's going to get you 50, 60 points. Probably not. And not in the role that he's going to be playing for the Oilers. But he could jump up if there's an injury. He could be moved around. Um, he wants to prove that Nashville was a one-off and that he was what he was in Ottawa is more what the player they can expect to see in Edmonton. So I think that was a really good low risk signing. Um, as for, you know, their other Tyler Ennis was a pickup they got for a million bucks and they kind of know what he is. So that was a really low risk one too. Yeah. Tyson Berry. What do you think there? Uh, Tyson Berry. I like it. It's hard to argue with that contract, right? Like 3.75. On a one-year deal, he's going to have a really good show-me opportunity. And again, like Tur like Turris, I think he wants to prove that Toronto is just sort of an anomaly. And if you look at his numbers, and Peter can probably speak to this, uh, he he got a lot of bad you know press in Toronto, uh, but he had two almost completely different seasons. You know, he had the season under Mike Babcock, and then the season under Sheldon Keith. And the season under Sheldon Keith was much better. You know, like way better. Now. So, and he's a guy that you remember in Colorado was like a 50 point player multiple times. Um, so I have a feeling that he's going to explode offensively running the power play here. That could be really good. I don't know if this is ever going to go any farther than one year. The others are going to have a lot of money coming off the books. So there may be some opportunity to bring him in longer than that. I don't think they're worried about that yet right now. I think they're thinking, you know what, let's just see how this goes cheap contract. And the Oscar cliff bomb situation is really what facilitated all of this, right? Um, striking out on Jacob Markstrom allowed them to get Tyson Berry and then the need to have somebody for cleft bomb. Cause I think they're under the impression he's not going to be available for most, if not all of next season. Um, so they needed somebody, right. And he's yeah. going to immediately come in there, shoots a different side, but he's going to take over that power play. And when you got McDavid dry settle, Nugent Hopkins, Barry all in your power play, it was already the best power play in the league last year. I can't see how that's going to change. 
Uh, quick side question for Peter. Let's talk about Tyson Berry in Toronto. Yeah. Why did that not work out in your mind? I mean, I guess it was mainly because of Mike Babcock. I mean, there was what, like Jim said, there was it was a tale of two Tyson Berries. One where, you know, Tyson Berry was playing on the third line multiple games before his firing, and then Sheldon Keith found, you know, his true potential in a puck moving right-handed shot and sort of tried to bump him up into the top four, even top pairing role. The thing is, like, yeah, his offense took off under to, uh, Sheldon Keith. I guess he found, like, his newfound confidence with him. But the factor that still remained is Tyson Berry was still kind of an issue in his own end defensively because we know how great of a puck mover he was. It's just his decision-making with the puck in positioning, um, trying to read on a two-on-one kind of situation – it just didn't quite work out. And, you know, with the defense situation in Toronto, what it's been like the, fa the past few years, if there's someone, you know, you hate to, like, find a scapegoat, but when you see kind of like B Barry make those mistakes, kind of like Jake Garner made those mistakes and other defensemen in the past, like Nikita Zaitsev, it's hard to try and, like, you know, get your confidence back and get, and get going. And I think that, you know, defensive issues aside, Tyson Barry – could try and prove everybody wrong by playing on a long, on, you know, the top power play alongside McDavid and Dreisaitl. So he has an opportunity, wish him nothing but the best, but I think that's the reason why you saw two different berries. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they know that he's mm -hmm. not got the best reputation as a defensive defenseman. Uh, they're aware of it. I have a feeling they're going to shelter some of that as much as they possibly can. Not that Edmonton's got the best blue line in the NHL. They certainly don't. Um, but I think they're going to probably try to shelter that as much as they can. I think the other thing that might, he might have going for him here is that the contract is so much lower that yes. when you have that and you're not said, okay, well, you're making X amount of dollars. You have to be good all the time in both ends. Some of that pressure is off of him now. Yeah. Right. So he can go out and do what he needs to do and be the Tyson Berry that people know that he is. And maybe, I mean, Edmonton fans are, are hard on people too. Mm -hmm. It's like a Toronto, Montreal, all these cities, Yeah, but they might, cut him a little slack mm. just because of the fact that that contract is so team friendly that yeah. they're like, well, Hey, we're only paying them this. Right. So we can excuse a couple of those gaffes. If there's a million of them, then that's an issue. Uh, but I think between sheltering him and knowing that he's underpaid yeah. for what he should be, they might cut him a little slack. And it was just a shade. His new contract is just a shade over what he was technically making because Colorado retained half of his salary. So 2.5 million, just a little bit over still good value. Absolutely. Good stuff, guys.